a pipeline is something that is programmable. You load a program. Uh, in this case, it's a P4 program. But uh, there are some things that uh, are not really describable in a language like P4. For example, IPsec uh, cryptography, which is built into IPsec. So for this reason, uh, you typically need a way to interface some external modules, accelerators, with programmable pipelines. So we'll just uh, remind people what P4 DPDK is uh, for a couple of minutes. We'll give you an update of the features that we implemented lately, uh, meaning in the last one year or so, um, in uh, DPDK. And then we'll talk about accelerators, how to interface those with the pipeline. We'll talk about how we enable IPsec and we'll draw some conclusions and definitely uh, look forward to get as many questions as possible. So, um, P4 language, as probably people know already, is a, a language that describes the data plane. Uh, in order for it to work on a real target, it needs to be translated to something that the target can understand. In the case of CPU, which is what we uh, deal with in P4 DPDK case, uh, this is uh, um, a high-level text file that we call the spec file, which eventually gets translated to a binary, to a shared object uh, file. In, in other tar for other targets, it's typically a binary of some sort. So there is a compiler that you need, you need a tool to, to do this translation uh, from, uh, from uh, a description to something that the, the target can, can uh, load and, and, uh, and run with, right? So uh, P4DPDK is essentially um, a framework, an open source uh, software framework that is part of DPDK uh, and also contains components outside of DPDK. Uh, and it simply allows you to, to load and run your P4 program on the CPU. It's, it's an unlikely fit because typically the, this language is used to uh, enable to, to, it's typically uh, uh, used for uh, smart NICs uh, for switches from different vendors. Um, so it's more about the hardware, but uh, why not uh, make it also uh, load and run on the CPU, right? So uh, we, plan we basically uh, look to enable uh, the flexibility of the language to describe stuff at a very high level, uh, describe data plane as tables and actions, and also um, Combine that with the, flex with, the, with the performance that the PDK typically gets on the CPU side. Uh, it, is, it is an open source uh, project, so uh, there is a compiler backend for the P4 language on p4.org. Uh, the, the links are actually in the slides. You could see the exact path to the repository uh, on GitHub. There is also a repository, another one on uh, the same um, GitHub uh, uh, place, uh, which essentially implements a sort of a generic uh, control plane API. We call it TDI, Table Driven Interface. Uh, this is an API that is, for people that are more familiar with P4, uh, P4 uh, the P4 language allows you to write a program to describe the data plane, but there is also a control plane protocol that allows you to populate those tables. And this TDI interface is kind of the local API that is called uh, by this uh, protocol called P4 Runtime, which is essentially message passing through the network. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll show you a picture later where you will see uh, a sort of external controller that would send configuration messages to this uh, target, to the data plane node. It could control many nodes. And uh, essentially, when that message gets to the target, there is a, an API that is called. And that is the TDI API that we want to standardize uh, to, to basically uh, get, uh, get as many targets using the same API and allow controllers to control as many targets as possible with the same API. And, and, and then uh, last by, but not least, we have the data plane engine, which is part of DPDK, the DPDK pipeline library and friends. Uh, the good news that uh, uh, is probably not uh, uh, news at this point is that uh, this project, uh, the P4 DPDK project, is the data plane target, the CPU target for this project called IPDK. I encourage people to take a look at ipdk.io uh, site. Let's go to the next slide. So a couple of words about how it's working, how this project is 
uh, working. Um, so, as I was saying, there is a compiler that is outside of the PDK. Uh, it, there is an open source uh, compiler front end for the P4 language that needs to be coupled with the, DP, with the sorry, with the, with the back end for each target. In this case, there is a uh, DPDK compiler target that's open source in that repo that I mentioned. Um, that produces, translates the P4 language um, program into uh, a high level text file that basically contains a sort of instructions in order to execute the actions. We can provide some examples. Uh, and and once, once that is done, uh, so basically this is the input to the compiler, the P4 program. The compiler will translate it to this thing that we call the spec file. It's a text file that contains instructions mostly for the actions and the, the life of the packet, like the control block. And then um, uh, this, this text file is actually loaded by the DPDK pipeline library. And it gets further translated into a C file. So we, we generate C code uh, out of these instructions uh, just for, this, uh, uh, for the DPDK target. Why do we do that? For performance reasons. Uh, a while ago, we, were, uh, we used to basically execute these uh, instructions directly, which essentially was about calling a function pointer for each instruction. But that was very uh, slow because uh, the, the C compiler didn't have the opportunity to uh, see the whole program and uh, um, optimize the whole program as a, uh, uh, together. So, so then uh, we ended up uh, inlining these uh, functions associated with instructions in a big C file. And now GCC or uh, CLang or any other C compiler has a much better, um, uh, it's, it's much better suited to, to optimize, to, uh, to, to do a, a better job at translating that uh, uh, into, into compiling that C code. And uh, essentially, we get a, a, a shared object, a binary out of uh, this at the end of the day, uh, at the end of this tool chain. So this is a sort of offline process. You do that before you actually deploy your, uh, your data plane program. So then, um, going to the runtime part, uh, what we do is uh, we provide this uh, binary, the pipeline.so file, to, to the external controller. And this guy knows where the data plane nodes are. For example, this is a node on, on a server, right? Uh, in, let's say, a data center. Uh, so using this, uh, um, this uh, protocol uh, called P4 runtime, the controller could connect to these uh, data plane nodes, to the targets, and uh, first of all, at the setup time, load this program. So basically provide this binary to the target. Here on, on the target, there is a sort of target agent, typically that would get this, uh, uh, this binary. And uh, based on that, it knows uh, how much memory to allocate, which data structures to create. Uh, there is also a mapping of a pipeline to a CPU core. You could map multiple pipelines to the same CPU core, or you could uh, map different pipelines to different CPU cores, uh, anything that you want. The only thing that you cannot do is splitting a pipeline to multiple CPU cores. So basically, a pipeline is a single thread uh, device. So given that uh, core, uh, core ID or L core ID, uh, at this point, um, the target agent is able to start uh, uh, dispatching that pipeline to that CPU core. The CPU core starts running the pipeline, and packets uh, are read and processed. Now, at this point, uh, all the tables are empty. So typically, all the packets will get dropped. The, a typical default action for a table would be to drop the packets that uh, fail the lookup in the table. So, so then, uh, the other job of the, 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 the real job of the controller at runtime is to populate these tables, manage the tables. So basically, add entries to some tables, later on, update them, delete some, add some to other tables. So, that needs to be managed uh, in order for packets to do to take the right path through the device and to the right thing. Uh, and also, you can get the stats out of the device. So that's that's the typical scenario that that is true for any any P4 target. Uh, but obviously, in, uh, here we have some specifics to the DPDK uh, CPU target. Yeah, uh, just a quick update on the features that we worked on uh, in the last, 
year or so. Um, so um, you would see the, this, this, uh, the, the, the blue, uh, the blue squares uh, are basically features that we added recently uh, that are new. The ones with gray are the ones that already existed for a while. Uh, but uh, as you see, there are some, some uh, blue dots everywhere, so we actually modified, uh, improved some of these uh, components lately. So obviously you need to have I.O. ports, you need to have your tables, uh, you need to have headers and metadata support uh, in P4. Uh, um, that, that's what the P4 language actually unleashes. So basically, it, uh, talking about the hardware target, you, you have all your resources there like memory, uh, table uh, lookup uh, capabilities. Um, it allows you to create metadata. It allows you to define your headers any way you want, right? So um, there is an explosion. If you look into P4 programs, you'll see that there is an explosion of metadata. People will just uh, uh, create, uh, define metadata fields and then they will populate those. They will test them later. They, they will populate, for example, on one table, look up one executing an action, they'll read them from the table, and then they'll save them as part of the packet context, and that uh, goes with the packet. Later on, you can test them, modify them, write them to the packet, or simply uh, discard them at the end of the processing. So there is a lot of metadata involved. Um, a few things uh, that we... Uh, improved. So, for example, uh, the IPsec block, right, we added uh, this concept, we thought a bit more about how to implement, how to connect accelerators to the pipeline for stuff that is not really describable in P4. So, for example, IPsec has uh, some encapsulations like the ESP encapsulation that requires a trailer. The trailer is not something that we can currently describe in the P4 language. So that's one of the reasons. Encryption is another reason, right? Encryption is not payload processing. Before it's about payload processing. It's about header processing. So encryption is about payload processing, not a typical operation that you would describe in the P4 language. You could interact with it through um, external blocks, or there is this also this concept of an extern call, where you could actually hook to, let's say, a harder block or in the case of a software target, it could be a function in a shared library that could be called as an extern. But uh, that, uh, each of these approaches has different uh, implications. So um, the other thing is we also have this driver in DPDK called Softnik, um, and we updated this, uh, this program, uh, this driver to be able to, uh, basically, it's, it's like a, a network device. Uh, it works with the DPDK network uh, Ethernet device API. Uh, to set up, to define queues, so on and so forth, start the device. But now the, uh, the, the pipeline in itself, what this device uh, is able to do, uh, can be described in P4. So you can provide a P4 program. This pipeline.so, essentially this shared library that is coming from the program through the compiler, can be loaded to define the pipeline, uh, the processing of this uh, device. Uh, we implemented hash functions, uh, non-cryptographic hash functions for load balancing, flow affinity. Uh, we uh, improved some of the I.O. port functionality. Uh, and uh, lots of small things that you can, uh, you can maybe re refer to here. A better way to set up the hash function for, a, for an exact match table. Um, Support of large fields, like f fields that are bigger than 64 bits, typically your IPv6 addresses uh, uh, require, require a, big, a big field. Uh, and uh, add-on miss tables, I think we, uh, we mentioned that uh, in the past, but now we did some rework on, on the way the timer works uh, in order to make it more flexible. Uh, we added the uh, direct version of counters, registers, and meters. Essentially, you could associate um, a counter or a register or a meter with a flow uh, in different ways. You could do it indirectly. So, for example, you could have an array of counters or meters or whatever. And uh, you could have a table. You could look into the table and you could get an index, which is the index of the meter or the counter that you want to work with. Uh, increment that counter with the payload size or by one in the case there is a packet uh, counter. Or you could meter, uh, apply the metering for that packet uh, based on the index of the meter or counter that you read from the previous table. That's the indirect version of things. Uh, now, there is also a direct version where you don't want to know that index. 
Uh, and that's important because you don't uh, need to request that index from the control plane. Um, basically, uh, the control plane, when populating the tables, all it needs to, uh, it doesn't need to, 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 to manage that index, free that index, for example, of the meter when the flow is released from the previous table. Um, the way uh, things work is like there is a direct version of it, so there is a, a, a transparent association between a flow and, and, and the counter or a meter or a register. Um, and the user doesn't need to manage that. It doesn't, the control plane doesn't need to populate that. So that, that is done, I mean, um, easily enough. You could, you could uh, for some table algorithms, you, could, uh, you know that, uh, for example, in a hash table, you could devise it in such a way that uh, whenever you get the key, you also get an ID of the key and, uh, under the hood. And that ID of the key could be used as uh, the index into the meter table, for example. So that's what we enabled. Um, but only for exact match tables uh, and LPM. Uh, we didn't do that for wildcard match tables and LPMs because the algorithm in DPK doesn't support that. Let's say unique key identifier at this point. Uh, whenever you manage that table, if you delete or add new entries, you will, uh, uh, you will get uh, a different behavior. And of course, we enable this, um, this um, uh, compiled mode for the pipeline. We don't have that interpreted mode that I was talking about. Uh, now talking about uh, coming back to the main topic of uh, before uh, accelerators. Um, so, as, as I was trying to, to say earlier, a pipeline is uh, programmable, so it can do many things. It depends on the program that you load into the pipeline, uh, and it requires uh, special capabilities in the hardware to do that to, to be programmable. Now, an accelerator or an extern block, uh, which is another name in the P4 language. Um, is something that uh, is uh, tuned for a given function. It typically does a single function, but uh, of course that function could be configurable. Um, for example, uh, cryptography or IPsec or checksums or uh, anything uh, similar. Uh, so in the case of hardware pipelines, hardware devices, uh, an accelerator is um, kind of uh, hardwired to, to the hardware, to the design as part of the design process. Uh, to the device as part of the design process. But in software, an accelerator uh, is actually something much more flexible because you could uh, decide uh, later what you want to load. As long as you have CPU cores, you could uh, decide which accelerator you want to load at initialization time. You don't probably change the accelerator while the program is running uh, unless you want to stop it and redeploy. Um, but it can be connected in so many versatile ways with, with pipelines, right? Um, the, uh, the thing to mention is uh, that uh, uh, you really want uh, the, the accelerators to be connected to the pipeline in a very specific way. Uh, for example, through, uh, through message queues, through request uh, and response queues, because you want the accelerator and the pipelines to work in parallel. You don't want you want to have asynchronous communication. You don't want the accelerator to stop while the pipeline is. Uh, you don't want the pipeline to stop while the accelerator is processing a packet. You don't want the pipeline to wait. So uh, that's uh, 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 that's 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 um, the main motivation to enable accelerators. And uh, this here you have a picture from from this uh, P4 uh, specification called PNA Portable NIC Architecture. Uh, and you can see accelerators here as part of basically very tightly connected with pipelines. So that's the vision that we want to enable. So now Radu, please show us uh, yeah. how IPsec works. Yeah, so um, as Christian said, um, we have this uh, accelerator, which is um, from the pipeline point of view, <coughs> it's, a, it's a asynchronous software accelerator, which uh, supports uh, ingress and egress uh, IPsec processing. And it does that by uh, leveraging the DPDK, uh, crypto, and IPsec uh, libraries. Uh, <coughs> so this uh, uh, IPsec uh, block, it's, um, it's uh, connected to the P4 pipeline, and um, all the complexity and uh, the details needed for the uh, crypto operations and uh, IPsec uh, encapsulation and decapsulations are hidden from hidden and transparent from uh, from the before uh, developer uh, point of view. So um, 
uh, this uh, is the flow of uh, the inbound or ingress IPsec path. Uh, so we have here, uh, we have the, the, the IPsec block and we have uh, the ingress and the egress ports into the IPsec block. Uh, and uh, uh, these are like special ports um, uh, from the pipeline uh, point of view. So when, uh, when uh, a packet is, is uh, received uh, from the network, so we have here like um, this, are, this is the, the network and this is the host port. So this is connects to the outside world and this is con this connects to the host. So when, uh, when, um, when a packet is received, um, the Ethernet header is removed and it is replaced with an intrinsic header which uh, contains the SAID. So there is a lookup table that uh, based, based on the destination IP and the SPI of the, of the IP second bound uh, packet, uh, looks up the SAID, which is uh, an ID uh, in uh, this SA database inside the CPU IPsec block. And uh, <coughs> uh, once that uh, uh, lookup is successful and uh, the pipeline should uh, process the, the, the packet from IPsec point of view, the extends IPsec from IPsec, uh, so this one here, uh, is set as false, so that will indicate that the packet didn't originate from the uh, CPU IPsec block, and IPsec enable its, uh, uh, its set, and uh, the CPU IPsec block and um, the, the IPsec block will uh, will uh, and it, uh, it will use that uh, ID to identify the proper um, uh, steps that needs to be taken to process this packet so it um, may indicate uh, uh, tunnel or transport mode ESP um, and the CPU IPsec block will process the packet, will add, the, will, um, will um, um, remove the ESP header and trailer and um, it will process the packet and then um, the, the packet will be sent back to the pipeline uh, through this, uh, this reserved port and uh, it will uh, uh, we will have the uh, extend IPsec from IPsec status set as, as true as to it will uh, <coughs> it will get a new Ethernet header and it will be forwarded uh, to the host And uh, this is the is, uh, reversed path. So the diagram here is reversed. We have here the host, and this is the network side, and the flow <coughs> goes this way. And uh, so this is the outbound path, obviously. And um, when the uh, uh, a packet is, is received from the host, um, again, uh, the Ethernet header will, will be removed and the uh, intrinsic header containing the SAID will be added. And uh, 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 same as before, the packet will, uh, the extends will be set like this. So it will be indicated that the packet, the packet doesn't originate from the IPsec block. And uh, the SA index will be, and enable and the SA index will be, will be set. And uh, through the <coughs> this uh, reserve port, the uh, packet will be sent to the CPU IPsec block, which
get back to Christy for the conclusions. Yeah, thank you, Radu. So, yeah, uh, the good news uh, that we wanted to present this year is that we uh, now also have a story about connecting accelerators with pipelines, and we also uh, have enabled IPsec to work with the, with the pipeline, so you could write your people programs, uh, develop your stack for the CPU, and also have IPsec support for it. Uh, so maybe um, one more thing here uh, from the previous slide. Uh, th there is here uh, the link to a P4 program, a reference program, that allows you to see how we could uh, uh, basically enable IP processing in a P4 program and uh, have all these other tables that Radu mentioned, a sort of classification table at the beginning, routing tables, next hop tables, working together with the SADB on the accelerator. So you, can, uh, you are more than welcome to take a look at this, uh, this program that is, is open source. Um, Say in the case you want to, uh, to develop a program, a P4 program for your smart NIC, that is P4 programmable, or IPU or DPU uh, device, that is P4 programmable. Uh, it's, it's, it might be a good idea to actually start with the CPU target first, to develop your P4 program, run the program, debug the program. Uh, I have to say we are not uh, doing that great on debug capabilities, but there are ways you could get traces and there are ways uh, I mean, definitely, you could get, uh, see, uh, take a look at the stats counters. Uh, there are ways to debug your program, like using counters, for example, uh, that you can instantiate in the code increment manually and then uh, inspect later, or simply look at the, the, the usual stats, uh, stats counters in the program to see where the packets are going, how many packets hit a table, how many miss a table. So you could basically... Um, Develop your program, debug your program on the CPU, and then you can move to to the uh, to the uh, to the real hardware device with a program that is uh, uh, is in, in a much better shape. You know that is functionally correct, and you also get an idea about the performance. Uh, to build your network stack in P4, if you are a fan of the P4 language, you see that is high level, is simple. You don't need to worry about pointers, buffers, and freeing all that uh, low-level stuff. You could simply define the, all, just the protocols that you need for that, that stack and um, for, for your application and, and to describe uh, your application in, in the default language and then just go and deploy it uh, on, on the CPU. So that could be another way to, to use it. Uh, uh, so hopefully... Uh, you will, uh, more people will get into this project and will, will use it and, and uh, give us feedback and help with, uh, with um, making more progress. Thank you very much. We'll wait for your questions now. Ori.